But Senator Lummis, uh, I'll ask my question, but and let me start uh, by sharing how glad I am, uh, Director Chopra, that the CFPB's funding structure is still intact. <clears throat> Uh, I joined my colleagues, I was happy to join my colleagues in an amicus brief to the Supreme Court protecting the Bureau, and uh, I'm glad that uh, they got that right um, and um, that uh, the Supreme Court upheld uh, the structure of the, of the uh, CFPB so that we can continue this very, very vital and important work. <laughs> Director Sh uh, Chopra, yesterday the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau announced a proposed rule that would block medical debt from appearing on most Americans' credit reports. The last time you appeared before this committee, we uh, discussed uh, this bipartisan report that I released not long ago uh, on insulin desert counties uh, with both high rates of Americans who are uninsured and high rates of Americans who have diabetes. We've seen, we see these counties all across the United States <clears throat> concentrated largely in the South, but by no means exclusively in the South. High rates of uninsured people, high rates of diabetes. Director Chopra, do you know how many of these insulin deserts also have high rates of medical debt? So we, we do believe that this is disproportionately harming um, some of those communities, especially in the South. I think it's pretty tragic that we have a system where people can be um, really punished over and over again for health issues and in a way that can destroy their financial life. Um, medical debts can contribute to bankruptcy. It can contribute to so much loss of income. And I do think what we've proposed is an important step to just a little bit put a stop to some of this. Yeah, so and, and my data shows that nearly half uh, nearly half of uh, uh, these insulin deserts also have high levels of, of medical debt. So you've got places like the state of Georgia that's still digging in its hills, refusing to expand Medicaid. You've got the working poor who are burdened by all of this medical debt, uninsured, uh, 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 all of these issues converging upon families at the same time. Uh, in Georgia, 27% of rural residents had medical collections on their credit report, 27%. That's six percentage points higher than the rate among all Georgians uh, and 10 percentage points higher than the national average. So 27% of rural residents uh, with medical collection uh, debt. Director Chopra, how would folks in the South especially benefit from a CFPB proposed rule banning medical debt from credit reports? Well, we expect that it will materially help their lives. Uh, in many cases, if medical debt is their only thing on their credit report, it will also materially <clears throat> increase their credit score. That means really the cost of so many other loans, auto loans, credit cards would go down for them. And more importantly, I think they wouldn't be dealing with adding insult to injury when it comes to their own health conditions. So this would have a material impact, obviously, on the lives of families. Uh, it's, it, you know, I often say that it's expensive to be poor. Uh, and this is an example of that. People burdened by medical debt, dragging down their credit scores. And so then the cost of money goes up. Goes up. This is a cycle that we, we have to stop. Right. Right. So thank you so very much. This is something that we've been pushing on this. And so I applaud you for proposing this rule, which would be life changing for so many people across the country, uh, but certainly throughout the South who are drowning, drowning in medical debt and bad credit, often while dealing with health challenges on top of all of this. This is enough to make anybody sick and sicker. Uh, so I'll continue to push my bipartisan bill to cap the cost of insulin for everyone that would prevent people with diabetes from going into medical debt in the first place. Uh, and I look forward to continuing to work with you on medical debt issues and addressing challenges uh, and solutions in my subcommittee. Um, so- uh, And let me thank you for working with me on this. I know we had a number of discussions. I know how much it uniquely affects some of the people you serve. So I appreciate all your engagement. On thank it. you so much. And since it's just the two of us here, you're stuck with me. I've got some more questions I'm going to ask. Um, there's a saying that if it looks like a duck, 
walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, probably a duck. The CFPB studied the buy now, pay later market, and saw that it had the features of a credit card that consumers should get key credit card protections when they use this option. Director Shoper, thank you for issuing a common sense interpretive rule that lets consumers dispute BNPL charges, get a refund, and receive periodic billing statements. I remain concerned about protecting data privacy. What will the CFPB do to make sure BNPL lenders do not harvest and sell consumers data without permission and make sure that the data is secure? It's a huge concern. I think this is something that is critical that this committee has to be working on. We are seeing so many companies announce new initiatives about how they're gonna monetize their surveillance of us. Mm -hmm. Right now, Senator Warnock, you basically get a notice telling, telling you, here's all the ways we're gonna use your data. Good luck to you. Right. No one really opts out of that and people don't even understand how much that data is gonna be used. And I, I'm worried we're lurching and lurching more toward a surveillance oriented system. It's really important that we work together to limit some of the excessive and intrusive surveillance. Sure, absolutely. People just check the box and, and they're moving on, they're focused on, on their- Yeah, job. sometimes they may not even be checking the box. Um, they might be just told through the notice that this we're, we're planning to use it for all sorts of purposes. And I think when it comes to this, we're looking at these data brokers as well. These new companies that are buying and selling our personal data, it's also a real national security concern. So President Biden has issued an executive order that also urges the CFPB to crack down on some of these data brokers who may not be complying with the Fair Credit Reporting Act. I think it's so important that people have control over their own data and how companies are using it. I'm also concerned that BNPL loans can lead to a debt trap. What can the CFPB do to keep consumers from sinking under the weight of having too many BNPL loans at once? Well, it's a really hard question. Both credit cards and buy now, pay later, um, people can suffer from, uh, get or can really get in over their head and suffer some real financial challenges. So there's now lots of BNPL companies um, in many cases, people might have loans with all of them, and it's not just for one type of big purchase. It used to be maybe it was for a substantial purchase that people needed to pay over time. Now you can use buy now, pay later loans for really almost anything, including everyday purchases. So that could lead into an over-indebtedness, and I think we need to make sure we have accurate information about that and that you're all looking about whether there needs to be enhanced protections on credit cards and buy now, pay later loans. Absolutely, and um, the public can provide comments uh, on the interpretive rule and buy now, pay later generally until August 1st, is that correct? That's right, and we do think that this buy now, pay later interpretive rule addresses a key pain point that many consumers express, which is when they return a product, are they gonna get the appropriate credit what if there is an erroneous charge? Under federal law, uh, there are certain protections that are long and well understood. There's no exemption for buy now, pay later. And in many cases, they meet the definition for open end credit or credit cards or whatever it may be that triggers important obligations. We want there to be innovation based on reality, not regulatory arbitrage. Uh, an important issue and one that I'll continue to monitor under my subcommittee on uh, financial institutions and uh, consumer protection. Uh, as chair of that subcommittee, I held a hearing on junk fees uh, in July of last year. And I'm pleased that in January, the CFPB issued proposals to restrict fees for overdrafts and non-sufficient funds. Many banks have reduced their fees voluntarily. The CFPB looked at data from 2019 through 2023 and found that consumers have saved more than $6 billion annually. 
in overdraft and NSF fees, $6 billion. Uh, however, voluntary fee reductions seem to have hit a plateau. Uh, Director Chopra, when do you expect to finalize rules restricting overdraft and NSF fees? Well, we're hoping any rules would take effect in 2025. We think it would create a more competitive market. And I just want to appreciate all the work being done when it comes to tackling the, just the, the, the whole creep of junk fees in the economy. It has been one of the worst innovations in our marketplaces. People need to see the price clearly. They don't need to be charged for mysterious services that they don't even want. And I really want to encourage you, Senator Warnock and others, to think about codifying some of our rules into Correct. statute mm -hmm. so that you know if there's strange legal theories or dragged out litigation from the junk fee lobby, that it won't stop the important benefits of this work. And I think that's something we certainly should take a, a look at. Um, and I look forward to, to seeing us finalize these rules. And uh, as you suggest, think about which of the rules or portions of the rule uh, we may need to uh, codify in, into law. Uh, I'm pleased that the CFPB finalized a rule to require banks to show their work when they set credit card late fees. Families need to use their hard earned money to put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads uh, rather than paying junk fees. Uh, it adds insult to injury to be charged a late fee when you mail a payment on time, but it arrives late. Uh, we won't get into the issues around the post office that many of us are addressing. Uh, consumers can't get a break in, in that regard. I've heard from Georgians who are concerned that bill payments they sent by mail may arrive late due to postal service delays. They may get charged then a late fee on their mortgage or credit card account through no fault of their own. Also, those who are in the market for credit may find that payments marked as late then affect their credit score or cause them to have more to pay, uh, have to pay more for credit. Uh, is there anything that CFPB can do to protect consumers from being charged a late fee due to mail delays? We got to figure this one out because I'm also hearing that there are other clerical errors where people initiate the bill payment and they have a confirmation, but it doesn't actually get received or it's claimed to not be received. I don't know how we solve this, but the federal law for credit cards does offer um, some protections on this. I think our work to rein in the abuse of this late fee loophole will help, but you're right, I think there's more we can do and we should figure that out. Well, thank you so much for your attention and I'll continue, even as I raise these issues, to press the Postmaster General and other top leaders of the Postal Service to immediately implement solutions to fix this unacceptable situation. Certainly, uh, the Postal Service shouldn't be a drag on the credit scores of ordinary people who are just trying to pay the bills. Um, uh, and 